This video is sponsored by Unity. Currently on the Unity Asset Store, there is a mega bundle sale where you can save up to 90% on some great hand-picked assets. If you're at all interested, please check it out using the link in the description below or in the comments. And if you actually decide to make any purchases, that'll help in supporting the channel too. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some more behind the scenes of the game I've been working on. Since last time I've added attacking, dealing damage, taking damage, health bar UI updating, when you die and there's only one player left, it goes to the next map, assuming you know, you've know you got different maps. And uh, currently I just hard code how many rounds there's gonna be, but I should let the, oh, I will be letting the lobby leader decide. So when they create a lobby, they say how many rounds it's gonna be. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 100, whatever. Once all the rounds are done, it actually takes you back to the main menu. I've still got some errors to fix with that. It still technically works and you can go and queue into a new game, but there's some errors in the console from some things I haven't cleaned up properly, but I'll be working on that after this video. That'll be like the next thing to do. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into the video. So a quick demo, I'm going to go and host a lobby. This is very, very similar, if not the exact same actually, to what I'm doing in my tutorial series. Though as I work on the game more and more, obviously I'll make slight adjustments that work for my game and it'll be more personalized. But I thought for my tutorial series, why not just do the same thing? Because I'm familiar with it. Okay, so these two are connected. I can then start the game. So it goes three, two, one. Now you notice at the top left, we've got the health bar UI. So we've got Dapper and Dapper 2. So this is, this is Dapper, okay? If I shoot, okay, I left click, it fires this thing off. And then it deals damage to Dapper 2. And if I go over here, it also updates the health bar UI. You can actually see when I do it here, I'll click a few times, pow, pow, pow. It does the damage to Dapper. Now the actual collisions and everything is done server side, meaning the clients can't cheat in that aspect. Currently, the only thing the clients can really cheat is their own movement, because uh, I trust the client in their movement, which I don't want to do in the long run. I want to make that server authoritative. The problem is if you just do that, like, easily if you just say you know pass the input to the server and the server moves you then there's actually quite a big input delay now right now the movement is very very responsive because it's done on my side so i need to do uh, lag compensation i need to do more research into that see how it works maybe look up some examples people have done before but for now i'm happy when testing just to leave it like this so obviously i can move around kill and then once they die uh, we actually go to a new map, so I made a second version of the map just with this little you know, box in the middle or whatever, some more a terrain. And then it's the same thing over here, right, so I can kill. Also, you'll see there's um, my score at the top left, so you see Dapper2 got the kill, so he was the last one remaining, he got a point. And we can both see who's got what points. Um, obviously, I can move around, hit people, and then once um, I die, so for example, if I now go and kill him over here, we just go back to the main menu screen. Obviously, yeah, there's still an error, though technically, yes, it, there are st actually still some problems with this. I think on this one, because it wasn't the server, I can go join. But even then, it's a bit weird because we're both in the lobby, but this one hasn't loaded yet. So it's it's a bit buggy. This is what I need to fix so that players can actually go and queue up for a new game without having to restart the entire thing. But obviously, for testing, it works right now, and that's what I'm working on next. So last time, what I actually had working was going to one scene, going three, two, one, and go. So now I need to cover the health UI and the damaging and stuff like that. So um, the first thing I'm actually gonna show you is the map set. So rather than having all the logic in here, I thought I'd uh, abstract it out. Well, not abstract, but basically I've made a thing called a map set and a map set is just a list of strings for all the different maps. But I've put this scene tag on that comes with mirror that allows me in Unity, if I actually show you this, if I go to game data map sets, I've got this main map set and it actually references scenes, but in code, they're actually treated as strings, just the names of the scenes. And then when people request to get the maps from me, so when you say dot maps, it actually just makes, it takes this list and gives you a read-only copy of it. So you can't alter it and everything like that. Because normally, even if a list is a getter, you could still like modify the list itself. You can, you know, add to it, remove from it. But right now you actually can't, it's a read-only copy. And I use this maps uh, thing in, here, let's go watch. So if I take this map set down here, I have a map handler, and this is what actually has a logic for going between maps. So when I construct it, I take in a map set, and look here, I basically store a read-only collection of string maps. I also take in the number of rounds, because it's up to the network manager to basically pass that to me, or whoever makes this instance of this class, tells us how many rounds we should have, and I just store it, okay? Then as soon as we start, I also reset maps. So what reset maps does is it basically says um, copy maps to remaining maps because what I want is once you've done a map, it just gets rid of it from the list and then just picks a new random one until you're out. And then what happens is over here, look, if we've run out of maps, but we're still like, we've got more rounds to do. Let's say my game has two maps and the, they want to play five rounds. Then as soon as we've done the two maps, we need to reset a bit basically. So reset maps just copies it back. Okay. 
So there's always going to be, as long as you have one map in your game, it will never fail. It will always just keep doing that one. And then to know if we are complete, as in like, are we done, you know, playing the game, is the current round equal to the number of rounds, okay? So whenever I ask for a map, I say, well, if I'm complete, then return null. Otherwise, increment current round, so we're on the next round. And as I said, if we're out of maps, then just reset it. And then pick us a random map from the remaining maps between zero and the count. And then once we've got that map, we remove it because it's no longer a remaining map. And then we return it to the person asking. Okay, so when they ask for next map, they you know have to use it because if they say next map and then don't use it, it still counts as them doing it. Okay. Now I could you know separate that out and then you know the person calling it has to say we have completed this map, but this is this works just fine. And now this next map, if I go over here, what actually happens is when we start game, we make the new map handler, and we go to the next map. But also. Um, I can call this go to next map method. Now this happens when we, um, so if you see over here, we call it over here. So when the round ends, we increment the score of the last player, so remaining player zero, increment their score, and then say go to next map. And go to next map will say, well, if we are complete, then stop the host and return. Now this is a logic that kind of needs to be updated. This is probably where the bugginess is happening when I stop, because it just um, doesn't really do a cleanup fully. It just literally turns off the host, stops the client and the server this manager is using. I don't think it stops the client that the other people are using and there's definitely still some bugs of it. But anyway, this is when we're done, we stop. But if we're not done, then we say server change scene, the next map. So we just keep on going next map, next map, next map until we're done. One of the next things I was thinking about was in games, what I normally do is I use interfaces for, for example, dealing damage. So I'll make an I damageable interface, then I'll make different classes that can be damaged effectively. So I'll have maybe a barrel and a player, you know, they both take damage, but maybe one has just one health and then one has a hundred health. The barrel can't be healed and the player can, for example, and so on. And with ECS and dots, the way you do that is you just add the components that make the most sense. So I was thinking about like, you know, Unity is still component based by design anyway. So, well, instead of using an I damageable interface, I just made a damageable class, okay? And it still works kind of the same way as the normal damageable interface does. Um, you stick this on something and you can call dot deal damage. So if I am dealing damage with a projectile, rather than getting the health class, I just get the damageable class and I say, Basically, is this thing damageable? It is if it has the script. And then if it does, then deal damage. And then for something to take damage, it has to have a health script. But the health literally just handles health and only health, not taking damage, healing. You know, that's kind of done elsewhere um, onto the health. So the health script stores the max health, which will probably be a, a stat I can get somewhere else. But for now, it's just, you know, set in the inspector. It has an actual health value. Then it has an event for when it dies, an event for when the health changes. And then you can check if it's dead, which is just a way of saying is the health zero. And then over here, when we start on the server, we set the health to the max health, okay? But it only needs to do that on the server because it's a sync var. So whenever it's updated on the server, the clients will then run this method here and they'll raise the event on their end. And then over here, when this is destroyed, so basically if um, the player leaves the game, it counts as them dying. So, you know, it's, it's basically the same thing. And then over here, Add and remove is simply just adding and removing health. It's not really the same as dealing damage and, and healing. I want to ignore those kind of terms. Those terms are separated. Just just add and removing health. When you add health, you know, basically add it and make sure it's it's correct. And then when you remove, do that too. But when you remove health, make sure that um, if your health is zero, you die effectively. So we raise the event and then we RPC handle death. So that basically tells all the clients that they died. And all the clients will do is they'll disable the game object. What this allows me to do is I can go stick a health script onto something and I can go stick a damageable script onto it as well. So for example, a barrel, but that means it can't be healed because there's no way to heal it. I can then make a healable component and a healable component looks pretty much like this. It references a health and then I have the heal method and then it adds health. And then once I've done that, then it's just a case of I build up my you know entities based on what components they have, which is still similar to what I've done in the past. It's just, I think, a better way of doing it. You know, you don't really need to use interfaces for this kind of thing. It kind of overcomplicates it and isn't as elegant. I only thought of this recently. I've not had anyone really suggest it because most people would just make a player script or a health script and that would handle dealing damage, healing, you know, everything. Um, I'm always for like, you know, separating things out, making it effectively like building blocks. So the difference between this and ECS is 
uh, in this, I need reference to a damage, to a health script, because I know I'm dealing damage to health, the health component. This logic here would be kind of in a system that loops over everything that is damageable and has health, right? And then it would say, subtract the damage from the health script, which means there's no like reference between damage and health. So that's the only downside to this that is better in ECS, but it's still so much better than what you know you normally do. And then, um, for example, let's say you've got damage reduction. Well, you know, it's a question of do you do damage reduction in here or do you do it in the health script? Well, I'd say you do it in here because the health script shouldn't have to know about any of that other stuff. The health script is just told, you know, by the server to add something to it or to remove stuff to it, uh, from it, sorry. Because um, let's imagine your health is changing, you're adding and removing from your health, but it's not damage, maybe it's something else, I don't know what it might be. Uh, you don't want to have to, you know, have loads of ifs in here saying like, oh, if it's, you know, an attack coming in, then do it this way, and if it's not an attack, do it some other way. Um, I'm thinking like when you reset health and stuff like that. And Then on the players, I have this script here called player. And this is just a way to basically say, you know, this is a player and it, it has spawned. It has nothing else. I'm not, you know, making it so the player has health and has an inventory and has this and has that. No, no, because that's that's going against what I just said. Um, it's literally just to raise events for when it spawns and despawns and it stores its owner. So effectively, the player, this is the player in the scene, like the physical player. And then the game player that we have over here is like their um, non, it's not like their in-scene representation. It's just stores their name and their score and you know whatever else um and what this actually will do is we subscribe to it in the player stats display which is the thing at the top left of the screen with the health um, we care about when the player spawns and despawns so when a player spawns and despawns we do these two things so i instantiate a bit of the ui and i set it up for this player and setup will um oops i've just pressed build let's stop the build or stop the the debug so what it does over here is it will say when we set up, we store the player's net ID just so that we can then later on, you know, get rid of this thing if the net ID matches. We then want to say, get their game player off this, go grab the display name, go grab the score. And then if the player does not have health, then return. But if they do have health, which they should, this is just safety, then subscribe to when their health changes. But then what we actually do over here is we say, well, when the player despawns, what we want to do is we want to say, go find the first one with the um, the ID matches. If that's null, then return. Should not be null, so it's fine. And then we remove from this list because we've got a list up here. And then we actually destroy the game object. So basically, if you leave the game, it just gets rid of your UI on all the clients. So over here, handle death is called, obviously, when someone dies. When someone dies, we check how many players are left. If there's one, then return. So this could happen if, for example, you've just won, and then you die by falling off the edge of the map before the round changes, or you die to uh, a damage over time like a burn. Obviously, we don't want to do anything else because you've, you've already won, so we return. And then we loop over all the players, and we say, well, if the player's null, that means that the reason they've died is because they've left the game. So if they've left the game, then remove them from the list, or if their connection matches the connection from this event. So basically, um, when this event is raised, it tells you who died or the connection to the person who died. And this is all done on the server, remember? So that this is a valid way to identify each of the different players is by their connection or by your connection to the client. So if that matches or the null, then remove them from the list. Okay, so basically the player died, get rid of them from remaining players. And then if that list count does not equal one, then return. So that could mean that there's two or three people left, because obviously if you're playing a four person, four person game and someone dies, there's still three people left you want to keep playing. But as soon as there's one person left, then we handle the round end, which says increment the score for the last guy. OK, so they get a point and then go to the next map. So going to the next map is what I showed earlier. We say, well, if we're complete, then stop the host and return, which basically is currently broken. So I do need to fix this. But otherwise, we just go to the next map. By going to the next map, we call on server scene changed when it's loaded. And then we do the same logic where we add the spawn system and the round system and everything works again. You know, every, all the players load into the new scene and then they go three, two, one, go and they fight. And then if there's another map, the entire cycle keeps going. So the game loop for what for like an actual match works just fine. Obviously, I need to add bits into this, like, for example, the loading screen, um, you know, the end game screen, you know, say like, congratulations, you won, play again, whatever, like all, all that needs to be done um, at the end of the game and between scenes, I can add into the current flow of things. The only thing that's broken is, as I've said, when we actually end the game, uh, I need to do some cleanup here. 
But that's what I'm going to be working on next. Obviously, making a multiplayer game isn't easy, but I'm trying to make it as easy as I can for you guys using Mirror. But yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Check out my affiliate link down below. Go check out the Mega Bundle. It sounds quite interesting. I might actually buy something off there too. Let me know down below what you want to see next. But apart from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website and the affiliate link. If you could go check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.